Good morning, my beloved grade 6. How are you? I hope you're doing well. Before I start the lesson, I want to give a special thanks to Ayan for writing an amazing writing paper and I'm so, so proud of her. Looking forward for more of your work, my dear. Thank you so much, Ayan. Now, for today's lesson, it's going to be about problem solution essay, okay? Before I go into deep, I want you to think, what do you think the essay is about? I'm telling you problem solution essay. If you think or you thought that we are going to take a problem and discuss a solution or finding a solution for it, then you're right. Here, your answer. What is a problem solution essay? Well, when we write a problem solution essay, we analyze the problem associated with a particular issue or situation. And then we put a possible solution, okay? Let's say that you were thinking about poverty or you're thinking about um, Let's, let's think about coronavirus right now, like COVID-19. It's a problem we are facing right now, okay? So if you want to discuss it as an essay, it's going to be a problem solution essay. You will start with a problem, mentioning the problem, what is the issue or the situation, and then you will try to tell me what can be solutions to face coronavirus or COVID-19. Well, here the writers, uh, you, may be mentioning uh, this, your opinion, in the introduction or the conclusion. So you can add your opinion either, uh, either in the introduction or in the conclusion, okay? Now, let's start like turning into pieces. Let's start with the first piece, okay? The introduction. In the introduction, you are introducing the problem. Usually, in the, in the introduction, you're telling me or you're talking about the problem. You are trying to tell me what the problem seems to be. Here are some steps that you can follow when you are discussing a problem, okay? First of all, you need to identify the problem. To identify the problem, you can use expressions such as, as far as I can see, the main problem is, or you can say, the problem seems to be that, and then you can move on with the problem, mentioning the problem. Here are two examples of how you can mention the problem. You start to putting your problem. After talking about the problem or identifying the problem, you need to identify the story or the history, background of the problem. To discuss the background of the problem, you can use expressions such as, the problem has been caused mainly by, so if you want to start like talking about coronavirus, as I said, you can say that um, the problem seems to be that coronavirus is like uh, spread hugely and fast. That's a way to start. Then you go in after like you're telling me what the problem is. You're going to tell me the problem has been caused mainly by. You're going to tell me what was the cause. What was the background of the, of the disease or of the problem. We, you can talk about pollution. You can talk about uh, Australia fire. You can, you can talk about any problem that um, is caused in, uh, in the world. Okay? So here in the first first thing you need to do, identify the problem. Then you're going to identify the history or the background of the problem. In number three, you need to discuss who is affected by the problem and who is responsible for the problem. You can use expressions such as the people who seem most affected by the situation are in COVID-19, all of us are affected, okay? But mainly young people or babies and 
old people are more affected but in general all of us are affected so stay safe please then you can, or you can say the source of the problem seems to be or in my opinion the problem originated from you're gonna tell me who are affected or who is affected by the problem number four you need to discuss the extent of the problem and what will happen if it's not solved you can use expressions such as the problem is quite serious because or if the problem is not dealt with what will happen okay so in uh, the introduction there's four stages you go for the first thing is identifying the problem then you're going to talk about the background of the problem or uh, the history of the problem in number three you're going to discuss who is affected by the problem and who is responsible for the problem and in number four you're going to discuss the extent of the problem and what will happen if it's not solved very soon here's an example this is an introduction here explaining the problem as i told you the first thing the hook which is very important because you need to catch the reader's attention don't you feel like it's hard to breathe sometimes now this is a good hook people don't care enough about the environment anymore air pollution is caused by dust particles fumes or smoke or odors that are introduced into the atmosphere in a way that makes it harmful to, to humans animals and plants now here is an introduction and then there is a thesis statement as you remember it's like uh, a short sentence it gives the general information about the essay although this is a huge problem for us there are many solutions that can help fix this issue okay so here as you can say i gave you the problem i ended identify the problem it's air pollution i tell you uh who can be affected by it humans animals plants uh, what uh, what is responsible for it dust particles fumes odors and etc okay now let's move on to the body the body of the essay in the problem sol solution uh, essay is the solution in the body you are introducing the solution let's see here are some steps that you can follow when you are discussing the solutions okay so in the introduction you're going to introduce your problem in the body you will discuss the solution you will introduce the solution to us in number one you need to introduce the solution you can use expressions such as one way to solve the problem is to you're going to mention the uh, the solution that you think in your way or your uh, mind can help or you can say perhaps one solution is to etc and number two discuss who can get involved in solving the problem you can use expressions such as for this solution to work different people need to get involved during the first and the second step you're going to use or discuss how effective the solution will be and how long it will take to solve the problem using the solution of course you can use expressions such as this solution will definitely get results but it may take a long time to solve the problem or you can say this solution is effective and it can put an end to the problem quite quickly so after introducing the uh the solution and uh, who can be involved in uh, in helping to to do the solution after that you will tell me or discuss how effective the solution will be and how long it will take okay now here's an example for the body you remember we were talking about the air pollution okay we introduced the problem now here in the body we will explain the solution or solutions there are different ways to help improve the environment in becoming a healthier place but we don't always do what needs to be done therefore 
we should start taking more action. Some solutions could be walking, riding a bike, or ta taking public transportation instead of driving. This will reduce air pollution because less smoke fumes will be let out. Also, recycling can help. We could furthermore reuse paper, bottles, clothes, and be more creative with everything we have. As a result, our planet will only get more benefits. See? So in the first in the first uh, part or in the introduction, I introduced the air, uh, air pollution problem, how it's affecting us, how it's becoming harder to breathe, how it's uh, affecting humans, animals, plants, and what were the causes of the air pollution. Here I explained the solution. I introduced my solution. Okay? Now, after you're finishing your introduction and your body, you're going to move on to the conclusion. The conclusion sums up the whole uh, idea of the essay, okay? It's going to give you like, you know, like a summary, a brief summary of the whole essay. It gives you the general idea or the solution. Now I'm going to explain it more for you. And by the conclusion, in conclusion paragraph, you should return to the thesis statement, restate it, and express your final thoughts and recommendations. Here are two strategies. Add a final observation about how people view the problem or make a call for action that asks people to do something to help solve the problem. As we were talking about the air pollution, you either can tell me a final observation or you're just going to call for action for all the people to help you uh, make it less harmful. Here's a solution. In the uh, previous slides when I showed you the introduction and the body of uh, the air pollution, here is the conclusion for it. Finally, air pollution is a big problem that can be solved by different solutions. Join us and help make the world a better place, won't you? Now here, what I used, I used the strategy calling for help. Here I'm calling people to help me uh, to do better, okay? Now it's not only me can help the air pollution, all of us should work together. Okay, here's an example of problem solution essay. As you can see, Here's a student who were doing an essay about techno-stress. Uh, techno-stress usually means um, a common type of stress that caused by technology, such as cell phones, uh, laptops, iPad, etc. So the topic here, techno-stress is becoming a serious problem these days. Discuss this problem and suggest some solution and it has to be at least 150 words, okay? One of the biggest problems facing the world today is techno-stress. Techno-stress is a common type of stress caused by technology, such as cell phones and computers. This essay will examine the problem of techno-stresses techno and suggest some possible solutions for it. So in the beginning, I introduced the problem, which is one of the biggest problem facing the world is the techno stress. And then the thesis statement, this essay will examine the problem of techno stress and suggest some possible solution for it. Now in the next two paragraphs, I'm giving some solutions. There are many problems connected with techno stress. One problem is that techno stress can cause frustration. This could result in headaches and sleeping problems. Another issue that you get addicted to the technology. This means you spend more time using it, which can cause physical problems such as damage to eyes and ears, as well as add more pressure. Here I give you 
more uh, I, I, I break down the problem uh, I mentioned how it is affecting us the techno stress okay after that I'm mentioning some solutions there are many ways to solve the problem of techno stress one solution is time management people who manage their time well will always have time to relax which will lower their techno stress another possibility is having a healthy lifestyle things like exercising eating good food and getting enough sleep keep your body strong and healthy which will help you to manage techno stress better okay once you finish with the body you move on to the conclusion in conclusion Time management is the best solution to manage techno stress. If we follow this solution, our life will be better. See? Short, easy, straight, and it's clear. Okay? Thank you, girl. I'll be waiting for your creative work. Stay safe until we meet again.